my words abide in you. You, will, you ask what you will and it will be done. What has God said about this matter? That is where we must begin if we're going to meditate. That's number one. Find the seed. What has God said? Number two, begin to mutter them to yourself. You see, meditation is it's an involved process. And what you're doing is you are creating a picture in your heart of who God says you are. You know, we understand through pictures. If I said car, you don't think the letter C-A-R. You think about the picture of a car, do you not? Yes. In fact, right now we all thought about different cars. If I said don't think about a white uh, Volkswagen Beetle, that's all we're thinking about, right? Because you can't not think about something because your mind thinks in pictures, okay? So we think in pictures. So when you are muttering to yourself, you are seeing yourself as a recipient of what the Word of God says you are. When you're meditating on something or meditating on the Word, you are involved in the picture. Let me give an example. Um, the Bible says, for instance, like I quoted earlier, that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. That is 2 Corinthians 5.17. All things have passed away and all things are becoming, uh, have become new. Now, if I was meditating on that verse, I don't say, um, if anyone is in Christ. I will put it in the first person. And I will be seeing myself in Christ. I am in Christ. I have given my life to the Lord. And therefore, I am a new creation. You see how it works. All things are passed away and all things have become new. I am beginning to paint a picture in my heart of myself in Christ. I'm not alone anymore. I'm now in Christ. I am now a new creation. I'm a new species of being that's never existed before. I have the nature of Almighty God. I am speaking out of my mouth. I am muttering to myself the truth I see in the word. And I'm seeing myself in that picture. I'm seeing myself in that picture. I am painting a picture in my heart. And that picture is truth. Because that is the word of God on the matter. God said to Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham wasn't meditating, God will make me the father of many nations. He was meditating, oh, God has made me the father of many nations. I am the father of many nations. He was painting a picture in his heart of the truth of the word of God regarding what God had already done. Not what God is going to do. When we're meditating, we're meditating on what God has already given us. What the word of God says he has already given us. Not what we think he's going to give us in the future. Because if you are meditating on what he's going to give you in the future, we don't know when he's going to give it to you. But his word says he has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So we look for verses that guarantee to us what he has given us. And then we begin to mutter them. We begin to mutter them. You know, um, I have a small farm, several acres, and, um, you know, it, it seems very strange that you have this little seed, and you go through a process, and after some weeks, it begins to sprout. It's a very strange thing, because the seed is very small. How can a small seed, like we just harvested some cucumbers not too long ago, how can a small seed, I mean the cucumber seed is actually very small. Mm. And from that seed, you could have 15, 20 cucumbers from that one seed. And it's, it's like a miraculous process. Now can you imagine someone seeing cucumber fruit, is it a fruit or a vegetable? It's a veg, okay. Imagine someone seeing cucumber vegetables. And thinking, no, there's no way it could come from this seed. There's no point planting the seed because there is no way this seed could ever give me that fruit or that vegetable. Mm -hmm. it's, it seems incredible, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of people have discarded seeds because they think, well, mm. you know, I've been having this issue for so long. Mm. I've not been able to have a child for 30 years. How can this little seed produce a child? It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. But you see, that seed is the word of God. And if you will only plant it, if you will only plant it, it will bring forth much fruit. So we begin to mutter it to ourselves. Seeing, seeing ourselves as recipients. Sometimes we'll fall on our faces, but we're not distracted by, by what happens on the outside. We're focused on what he says. You know, my friend, when he began to say to himself, I'm a new creation, sometimes he'll, he'll find himself smoking and he'll say, well, I am a new creation. Go back to his room and say, Lord, I'm sorry, but I'm a new creation. He did not allow his focus to be distracted. Remember what Solomon said. Pay attention. Incline your ears. Put it in front of your eyes. Don't let it, let it fill your heart. And then it will become life to you. It's a process. It is a process. So number two, begin to mutter to yourself. For five more minutes. Begin to mutter them to yourself. See yourself as a recipient of what you desire. Number three, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. The Holy Spirit is our helper, and he's very real. Remember in the beginning when the Bible says in Genesis 1, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Word of God, when the Word of God was spoken, the Spirit of God created the Word and brought it to pass in the earth. And that is exactly what he does in our lives. Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, help me. As I'm meditating the Word, reveal the truth of your Word to my heart. That's number three. Number four, keep doing this until it drives out fear from your heart and creates rest about that matter. Keep meditating in the word. Keep meditating in the word. Keep speaking the word to yourself. This is who I am. This is what I have. The Bible concerning Abraham says that he was fully persuaded that what God has said he was able to perform. And he began to give glory to God. I am the father of many nations. Why am I the father of many nations? Because God says, I'm the father of many nations. Look at the stars of the heavens. As many as there are, so will my descendants be. He began to align himself with the truth of what God had said about him. He began to give glory to God. He drove out fear from his heart. The Bible says that when we believe we enter into rest, there is a rest that we enter into as we meditate in the truth of the word. And then lastly, we act on what we believe. We act on what we believe. So number one, find verses that promise you what God has said. Number two, begin to mutter them to yourself. See yourself as a recipient of what God has promised. Number three, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth of the word to your heart. Number four, don't give up. Keep doing this. Keep muttering the word. It's like you plant a seed, you've got to take care of it. Keep muttering the word. The word of God is truth. The word of God, irrespective of how small it looks, has the power of God in itself to bring itself to pass. Keep doing this until it drives out fear from your heart and creates rest about that matter. And lastly, Act on what you believe. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.13 that we also have in the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. We also believe and therefore we speak. Remember the, um, the story of the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that um, she went through the crowd. And she said to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. You know, on that day, there were so many people touching Jesus, but nobody got healed. But this woman believed. She had heard of Jesus. She had filled her heart with understanding of who Jesus is. She, was, she had pushed out fear from her heart. She knew that Jesus loved her. She knew that Jesus wanted to heal her. She knew that if she touched him, she would be healed and she received her healing. It doesn't matter what anyone else is saying, whatever what anyone else thinks is possible or isn't possible. What is important is what has God said. 
What is important is have you paid attention to what he has said? Have you planted that seed in your heart? And you will begin to see, just like the angel said to Mary, Elizabeth, your cousin, people have called her barren, but now she has a child. It doesn't matter what people call you. It is what the word of God says about you and what you align yourself with in the word that makes all the difference. You know, you and I can experience the power of God in our lives. You and I can experience the power of God in our lives. In the air of healing, in the air of the miraculous, in the air of God breaking forth into our, into our lives in every dimension of life. But it always begins with what are we doing with the word? Are we meditating in the word? It doesn't matter if you're, a, if you're a pastor or you're a business person. Joshua was the leader of an army. He was leading three million people. And he needed wisdom. What was God's solution? Meditate on the word. Timothy was a pastor. He was a young pastor. He needed wisdom. He needed strength. What was the, uh, you know, the solution? Meditate on the word. Because that is how we get the seed of the word into our hearts. And that is how the productivity of the word of God will break forth into our lives. Amen. I trust you got something from the word of God this evening. Yes. Yes. Let us pray.